Coca-Cola used to have what? Yeah, cocaine, cocaine. in it. Yeah. Dr. Pepper had heroin in it. Sprite had Dr. Molly Pepper in had it. heroin? Okay, really? those no. last two I made up. But okay. Coke had <laughs> cocaine in it. Had coca leaves. And some <laughs> say so they gullible. still use a little bit of cocaine because no other brand really matches that Coca-Cola flavor. And it's like, well, it's our secret ingredient. Hey, what's your secret ingredient? All right, that's enough time for the tour today. Uh, and then this like mysterious truck from Colombia or whatever comes in. <laughs> Welcome to the, to the psychedelic, our first psychedelic episode of Mind Under Breath. That is a, even though it's a cliche, that is like, that's actually, most of the cliches of psychedelics are so ridiculous, but the, mm-hmm. like that one, that one will get going in that certain always, instances. And it's always like with any psychedelic, it's like, I think they don't work. I think I got a bad batch of it. I think something, it's always like this huge doubt since it didn't work immediately or within 45 minutes. But then when it does, it's like, I'm sorry, I doubted you, 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 you. <laughs> Doubted who? 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 Oh, uh, yeah. This is because, well, eventually, when we have 500 Patreon members, we're going to launch Mum University. And the first one will be DMT 10101, which basically my, my plan for that is to break down my whole history with DMT, with what the, how my ideas evolved over time. And then, and then there'll be, there'll be like a fair amount of science and different things, things that you hear through this show. So there might be even some stuff that I need to repeat, but put it in the specific instance of that of of the dmt context i'm really looking forward to that so hop on patreon where you get mind under art and all these other things but today i thought we'd just do um the reason why we're picking today to do a psychedelics episode uh was is just because we've both tripped a little more recently ramin and i and not together unfortunately have we just DMT. We've only smoked DMT together. That's true. Only the like that's like <laughs> only playing together in the All Star game, but we've never played in like the conference games or in high high school or street never ball. Practiced. Just like <laughs> uh, never a shoot around. <laughs> yeah, that's Just true. Went that to the Olympics. To me. That's funny. That's so no. weird. I think so. I feel like it's almost happened. But the the thing with psychedelics i don't know what your perspective is and i'm probably i I, like i kind of envision this of being a little more of a general episode and not getting too heavy into things so you always run the risk of like the advanced people want to like really go down the rabbit holes but you don't want to lose people that aren't as advanced either. So it's a little hard to, I always thought about that when I was constructing my psychedelic shows and everything. And so it's, it's, it's fun to find that balance in there, but it, it is, it it is the further you are from a psychedelic experience, the more it's just like, what is (laughs) tripping like? Hey, I can, I can repeat what I used to say about tripping but you can't you can't feel it it's personal and that's the main thing that surprises people especially me but you you associate it with visuals the walls are going to breathe you're going to see lots of colors and the chests are cat but what you're not prepared for is like the deep epiphanies that normally you get one epiphany every five years and then now you're getting five epiphanies every second you're like wait i'm not done integrating those last five more more and then like a whole like truck load of more epiphanies just pulls up and then the little like door opens and then the truck thing like lifts up and starts dumping epiphanies just directly (laughs) into you or maybe none of that maybe you don't get any epiphanies and you realize that was my experience and your experience is an epiphanyless state of uh i don't know that would be that would be once we can curate uh the 
the much like they try to do with cannabis of indica and sativa and this will this this will make you like a tired kind of awake and uh and like creative in terms of drawing but not but uninteresting to talk to like ooh, i want that one and uh the uninteresting to talk to is just a placebo <laughs> this tastes like but, just a sugar cube it's not it's dosed with lsd it makes that, you not interesting to talk to that would be i could see there's there's like because if you did enough if psychedelics were designed and you did it on enough of a regiment where there would be times when you're like oh i want the non-epiphany uh psychedelic experience this time i'm set on ideas can you give me the uh a newfound fondness for spreadsheets <laughs> trip that's the one that's the one i'd like to work on that's going to be the only one that's legal then because we know <laughs> that the only drugs that stay legal are the ones that keep you productive and not to be like che guerrera or whatever and have a a uh, logo that's the fist raised in the air. That's a great brand and everything, but uh, yeah, yeah, coffee legal, cigarettes legal, alcohol legal, but but watch out. And then the other stuff that makes you complicit with not being productive is like, ooh, very bad. We it's weird that they've never tried prohibition with cigarettes. Where I don't think that there'd be. I don't think there there would be speakeasies in the same sort of I don't think there'd be the same underground stuff going on with cigarettes just because they're kind of not worth the bother and everyone that smokes cigarettes by the time in the two weeks it would take for you to line up your illegal cigarettes and everything it'd kind of be like oh I'm not craving them in the same and thank goodness I'm broken free of the where you can understand prohibition and alcohol and people want to dance and have lowered inhibitions and everything but it is so that that is the one that's fun and is still sneaks through I guess weed too but there's a strange thing like MDMA I think even the FDA when they started showing all this promise with PTSD the FDA or whatever was. Imagine I, not you, knowing any of those acronyms. Like, oh, I take MDMA for PTSD, and the FDA says it's okay. Like, what? <laughs> huh? LOLs. Uh, there's the MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy on the street, uh, or Molly uh, in the pure form. Right? <laughs> is that true? I think it's true. Oh, is that how? Is there like a way of distinct? You call I it thought Molly, Molly was pure MDMA, and I thought ecstasy had another thing in it or vice versa oh, or perhaps they're all that. uh perhaps they're all synonyms or homonyms when they're exactly I thought they the were same. all just simahams but Sim there is there is the there was a push to investigate whether you can take the pleasant feeling of MDMA out of it and get the same result they're like can you treat ptsd without making people happy for four hours that's like when they would remove they remove the the clitoris from women in some uh uh not civilization let's call them happens. uncivilizations i think it still happens from time to time you snip they're a clip uncivilized yeah um that's... or the, the way they took codeine out of cough syrup like cough syrup, the codeine was what gave you that sense of euphoria. And now it only has the menthol and the purple food dye. So no euphoria, but you're you not going to can't robo trip anymore? What's robo trip? Oh, that's like when you drink a bunch of Robitussin and trip balls. You so can still get you Robitussin, I think, but it's not over the counter. Before you could just buy it over the counter like NyQuil. Mm, really? Codeine? Yeah, like in the 90s. You can't get Robitussin over the counter anymore? I don't My think goodness, so. My goodness, I think you're right. Yeah, look it up. I think you're right. I've never seen they crack down. Robitussin. You're right. I get like NyQuil or DayQuil on the few times that I get that stuff. Coca-Cola used to have what? Yeah, cocaine, cocaine. in it. Yeah. Dr. Pepper had heroin in it. Sprite had Dr. Molly Pepper in had it. Dr. Pepper had heroin? Okay, really? those no. last two I made up. But okay. Coke had <laughs> cocaine in it. 
had coca leaves and some oh, say so they gullible. still use a little bit of cocaine because no other brand really matches that coca-cola flavor and it's like well it's our secret ingredient hey what's your secret ingredient all right and that's enough time for the tour today uh, and then this like mysterious truck from columbia or whatever comes in <laughs> no 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 we extract the cocaine out of it entirely it has columbia license plates on it and everything yeah. I've gotten really um, into energy coke this last week. You know how I go through little phases of stuff. Like I'm talking about some Star Wars show for kids one week. And then this week I'm talking about uh, co- Coca-Cola with added Guarana, B12, like what? monster energy drink, Red Bull, but in a Coca-Cola form. And they've got cherry. I didn't, I didn't know this existed. They yeah, ha- it's and they have I like it. <laughs> I've got one right now. I'm not going to open it right now. I'm saving it for after I really Show need me. it. You got you got really is brought into to you by this. Energy Coke. Energy. It's pretty oh, thin. Oh wow. It's thin and tall. Comes if in a I 12 fluid ounce can. I'm Review Bra now. Do you ever watch Review Bra on YouTube? Uh-uh. It's this guy in a suit that's been reviewing energy drinks since he's 9 years old and he's like, "Welcome <laughs> to another episode of Running on Empty. Today we will be exploring <gasps> Energy Coke. This is a uh Coke. It's in a large <laughs> can. It comes in a red can. It's red. Uh, has a tab at the front. Oh, I like that they make the tab red. I'm not sure if all Cokes. Have, and he just talks for 20 minutes about energy I drinks, got, and then he drinks the whole thing. And uh, he's got a billion subscribers. Wow! I just got to experience what many of our audience already has. Is this is my first time you've done an impression? I think that I haven't heard the actual person before. And yeah, I like, imagine you're nailing it. <laughs> and it's a, but the impression itself was still funny. So now I'm like, oh, that's even great. Who sounds like that? Now I want to look it up. That's if I would have, if I saw anything that says the word energy and huge on it, I run the opposite direction from Interesting. It, you don't drink energy drinks? Red Bull? I'm, I, uh, Monster. I sometimes drink upwards of 15 cups of coffee a day, but there's something about energy drinks that they upset my stomach, first of all. And then they cost make of me entry. <laughs> that's cost of entry should be that's an important topic for today's. Episode. Oh, yeah. Any side effect you're going to mention, I experience in spades. Do I stop drinking the energy drinks? Never. I can't. And I I love coffee, too. I love green tea. I recognize that eating fruit is a better form of sustained (laughs) energy. But sometimes you don't want a healthy relationship. You want the crazy uh, psycho thing that makes you feel good for five minutes and that makes you feel bad for an hour. But, oh, man, those are a productive five minutes. I hope I've figured out zero point energy in five minutes. Wow. I I lost it. People watching on YouTube just got to see Ramin do sign language for fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our Jim Carrey slash, what did you say? It was Jim Carrey, George that Carlin, a, and uh, some other person that does this. Uh, Emo Phillips. Emo Phillips, uh, yeah. And I think Jim Carrey doesn't do it. That was in a bonus art um episode so you got to get on patreon to get all if you think our references are obscure <laughs> just in terms of like oh you need to know who you've all know harari and del the funky homo sapien are to understand the regular like that exists in real life you also need to join patreon Mm -hmm. (laughs) to get references that only we make from there it's the this is the most difficult podcast that there is but it's it's worth it it just takes a little extra effort yeah we're gonna take you to places on the internet you would have never gone before and you probably don't want to go to and you never will go to again the cost of entry thing I was actually thinking about that recently because I got uh, <laughs> I got um, some I got some. <laughs> Are we talking about 2017, 2020? Uh, uh, no, no, we're talking about like weeks ago. Ooh. I got I went on like a little bit of a ketamine bender because when I get into something, I want to I like want to get to the like. I mean, do you? Do you stop playing a video game before you've gotten to the end of it? 
No. no. We weren't even allowed to buy a new one until we beat it 100% with no cheat codes and no looking at the instruction book. So your your mom makes you makes you play it in front of her. You can't use a warp zone. <laughs> She's policing the whole thing. Um, Actually it was dad, but not too strict. Dad. It was just kind of like a rule. It wasn't like show me, but it was like Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to put this secrets book up here where you can't reach it. There's the instruction book also where you can't reach it. And yeah, have fun. I remember a family friend that came over that was like the first adult that was interested in playing a video game with me. She was like, sure, I'll play with you. And I've been trying to just like show an adult how amazing a Nintendo is mm -hmm. and like no one got it. And she's they can't like, run. Sure, they, Mario just falls in the first pit because they don't know how to <laughs> yeah. do the run and jump. They just walk and then fall. And you're like, oh, how do you make money to afford the house and, <laughs> and, and, and make me exist? And like, this is the simplest thing and you can't master this. <laughs> Man, one time my, we were playing Cruise in USA and my brother and I couldn't beat this level. And he just sat down. He doesn't even play video games. And he just kicked the level's ass. And he's like, what? It's driving. I drive. This is nothing. <laughs> and then we weren't drivers yet. So we didn't really know the nuances of driving a, a car on N64. But it was just intuitive to him to, to beat the Cruise in USA game. Whereas I played a lot of Cruise, cruise in USA. So I assumed I was a good driver. <laughs> and it turns out in real life, driving doesn't work the same as Cruise in USA. But I had this person I showed Duck Hunt to classic came with the Nintendo Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt on the same game. Mm -hmm. And Come with the gun. wow, how can they fit all of that on one enormous thing that you have to blow into? This is incredible. And uh, she was vegetarian, so she didn't want to hunt ducks. Um, so we did, had to do the uh, what, the clay pigeons for her Lame. instead. Does she because... know they're equally lifeless? They're all <laughs> lifeless pixels. It was a bizarre. I had my hopes up, like finally a human I can connect with, and then said that I was like, "Oh, I'm not connecting with this human who has feelings about pixels that she can't shoot." Yeah, I kill human beings in the pixel world. And yeah. they're more graphic than like the ones in our world, like in yeah, the yeah. Mortal Kombat games where it'll you'll kneel someone and then it does an x-ray of you breaking their ribs and it shows the heartbeat stopping <laughs> and stuff. And it's like, oh, wow, I'm getting an anatomy lesson and I'm kicking Kano's ass or whoever. <laughs> uh, so this caused of entry, I went on a ketamine kick uh, lately and I had both available um to me i had both intramuscular uh, uh available and i had and Oral. i had powder oh available snort yeah to snoot snoot and then i and so i just like tore through like kind of busted my snooter which will <laughs> It'll <laughs> it doesn't sound healthy when you think of like an intramuscular and going up the nose. It's like the two, uh, you know, most problematic images of uh, it really use. is, especially. Well, yeah, they're they they really are. I mean, intramuscular, you know, I've 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 never I've never put something in my vein and I'm not even opposed to it. Now that I understand, like it is, it is funny that someone will just eat whatever sugar cube of LSD that was made from whatever. But then they're like, I'm not going to take this vial made by an actual company and do exactly what doctors do and put the exact, know exactly the dose, the exact everything like the safest possible way that you could do it really and that's problematic snorting is first off snorting is super unscientific but lots of fun <laughs> yeah it just screams unscientific it's it's i mean putting anything in your nose is bizarre like for sure but i also 
because we've talked about hape on this show before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spelled rape. Right? Rape. Yeah, rape. Yeah. yeah, it's spelled R A P E, uh, and it's but with a hape. little what is this? Not an um, the um, accent, well, but it's a little accent on yeah. there. Accent aigu and accent grave. And That's that how you, you remember blow. It in French. Oh, really? Well, aigu means it's like going up, and then accent grave, it's like, oh, it's going down. So that's how you remember it French style. I don't know what it's mm. called in Spanish or the other ones, because there's so many other languages that use the accent. But but, um, but to see someone take a, like a blowgun like, and then pack something in it, and then someone just ponies a, their nose, their old nostril up to the blowhole and then and then someone else just blows it into their and it's a shocking response Mm -hmm. it 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 feels like if you haven't done it before when you do it more regularly like everything you just sort of get used to it but it's still a bit much but if it's your first time it feels like you just got shot in the brain with a shotgun that's what it feels like. Mm, I, I, like I equate it more to an electricity feeling than like shotgun because that like you feel like it's being blown apart. But to me, I remember it as more of like ele- electrocuting, but but like really? spicy, like a spicy electrocution of your brain to your sinuses mm. and it clears your sinuses and it's you, you feel the mother tobacco plant. Like if, if you were to describe it as any entity, it's like mother tobacco being... Uh, descending yeah. her grace on you with all her fiery, burning, cleansing energy. I wonder what the average person would think if you went to a doctor's office and the doctor was like, okay, we got two options. We're going to uh, do a spicy electrocution <laughs> of your brain. <laughs> or uh, or you get the shotgun to the brain feel they both do the exact same for you they're both very helpful but you need to take one of the punishments i think most people would take the elect the spicy electrocution yeah especially if you put the word spicy would you in front of you it. would take it right yeah i mean shotgun to the brain it sounds so horribly violent yeah, I don't I don't remember any of it as being unpleasant. Like I wouldn't call it comfortable either, but it wasn't unpleasant in its discomfort. It was like kind of a soothing uh discomfort. Mm. Maybe because I was going in expecting it to be like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to breathe and what am I doing? Why is the smoke going up my nose? But Oh, smoke? Or not smoke, but whatever it is, the powder. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. powder. The yeah. Thing. Yeah, mine was more violent, like uh, just kicked me in the nose and like, holy smokes. But I just I love an acute pain Have we joked. I think you joked about like no one. No one likes a chronic pain, like only only people only. Of course, you like acute pain like, oh, what a very brief transient pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you take that over the day in day out pain any day of the week of course chronic pain that you don't habituate to oh man that's like such a it it makes suicide make so much sense where you're like oh if i was guaranteed to feel like this forever like it so clearly that i would want to leave this body not to encourage chronic pain people to commit suicide hang in there don't do it um call 800 don't do it. Is that the suicide hotline? They got to yeah, get that number. Yeah, it's 1-800-DON'T-DO-IT. 1-800-DON'T-DO-IT. Um, and as you're like shaking and typing in, you accidentally write in, do it. And then you get someone that tells you like, do it. I believe there is something with chronic meth use that in some people makes it impossible for them to feel joy. Because <laughs> mm, they burned that's out the serotonin oh, well, like connection. Yeah. It's just like frayed that's and a, just that, little sparks <laughs> flying off of it, but nothing can connect. That's a rough one. Oh, but, so delicate. So delicate, these little receptors and the way it like carries the the neurotransmitters. Have you seen that micro uh, electron microscope image of the the serotonin receptor carrying the serotonin and the way it has its steps. It's like, it looks like happiness. Like it looks like the physical embodiedness of happiness. And I know it's anthropomorphizing, but it's what's going on in your head. It's like doing. 
It's, it's like the... Um, it's carrying it with a little bit of a what, bounce. What was that song? And I can't walk and I, I can't, can't sing. sing. I can't dance. What was yeah. that? I can't dance. I can't sing. Only thing about me is the way I walk. No, I yeah. can't dance. I can't talk. Only thing about me is the way I walk. Yeah. Check out yeah, Dress yeah. Out Dress Up Gang on TBS. They have a great episode about Donnie, you know, they catch him dancing and he's not allowed to dance and then they find out that he was just walking cuz he plays the music video and it's showing that you know, I was those, just walking like Those guys are exceptional. That uh, that what was the adorable house or whatever, the cute house? Cute house. Oh, that's another cute great sketch. So that's the Avengers of comedy cuz they've got so many funny people on that show and they use them specifically in the way that they are specifically funny. Like yeah, Demorge yeah. is funny in a specific way, Donnie's funny in a specific way, Corey, Brent, Frankie. Oh man. Sometimes Frankie's very good. And they've got Sometimes Andy Kurt McDowell Fox shows up. Actual Andy McDowell, the actor. <laughs> um, from Groundhog Day. She's just in the cast. Oh yeah. Uh and uh yeah, so that is a fun way of of that serotonin. I, I gotta look that up. Yeah, just I'm serotonin to... walking gif gif. S- so this this cost of entry for ketamine, I realized that it's just my, what what I realized, and this isn't going to sound like that much of an epiphany once you hear it, but what I realized is I, I was like, oh, this is just the exact same of you eat mushrooms and you feel nauseous or you you do any psychedelic that's altering your neural chemistry and you're probably going to get a bit of nausea going so so some one one nice example that i like to use in terms of the mismatch uh with our evolved um uh brain in our modern world is i talk about car sickness quite a bit which one of my favorite ideas about why car sickness happens is that because you have your in, you're in the passenger seat doesn't happen so much when you're driving and it's worse even if you're behind the vehicle if you're not looking out the window but you're in the passenger seat and so your your inner ear is telling your brain we're moving right now like the fluid in your inner ear can, is communicating to your brain we're moving and your eyes are looking at the dash or reading a book. If you're reading, it's always going to be worse. And so your eyes are going, we're not moving right now. And so there's this mismatch of information that would have never happened in our evolved world. And there's a bit of a supervisor in there saying, like, why are we getting two opposing messages from these two like pretty reliable sources? of sensory information what is going on why are these wires getting crossed oh i wonder if we've eaten something bad i wonder if Mm. we've been poisoned which would cause neurologic issues like that and so then you start readying yourself to throw up and you start getting nauseous in that same way i think of psychedelics as as doing that as it's protecting you it's like what the hell did you just eat or whatever else but i'd never thought about it in terms of snorting something you (laughs) snort something and you then and then a few uh, which is one got to be a strange thing for your brain to be like wait what just (laughs) happened like maybe if you're in the ocean something like ocean water could get blasted up your tutor like yeah it's only supposed to be air Anything non-air is very suspect. So suspect. Defenses are going to go up. Now you're feeling goofy and strange like you've never felt before. Of course, it's going to have this sort of allergic response, which, by the way, there's a there's an idea. It's a bit of snorting advice. Um, <laughs> there's it's just the snorting episode. <laughs> There's there's an idea like you switch it up. You go to this one and then you go to that one and then you keep on switching it up and that's the way to go. Well, um, nostrils actually have... So 
so the reason that we can smell in stereo, we can smell three di- uh, like three dimensionally. We can be like, oh, that smell is coming from over yonder, and you have a pretty good sense of where it's coming from. I've never thought about that, but I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, how your nose is pulling that off is part of how it's pulling it off is because the way in which your olfactory neurons, uh, what processes that information in your nose um, is, is taking that in is there's, there's molecules that are registered by different neurons and, and different, different transmitters that bind at different speeds. So always in every day you have one nostril that is um it's actually you you have it's actually a rectile tissue in your nostrils you erectile like a, yeah yeah oh just and that the, it becomes firm or filled with blood is that the yeah, definition of erectile because people yeah, are going to think yeah. of it as like only penises but there's all yeah. sorts of stuff that can get erect yeah you have a boner in your nose yeah. and and so one of your nostrils is always smelling taking air in slower um and and has less airflow and the other one's always faster and it changes about every 15 minutes or so and so it, it, they trade so when off i'm sucking in right now you're telling me that they're not sucking in at the same force correct one of them is doing more of the work and then they trade and, off and you know when you notice it is when you have a cold Mm. When both of them are inhibited, you're like, oh, one works right now, and then it won't necessarily be the same one. Like, I'm so glad I don't later. even remember that. Like, it's been so long since I've had a cold. It's and amazing. I forgot everything before 2019. I just don't even, it's, it's a weird Pixar movie to me, as far as I'm concerned. For anyone that believe that doesn't believe in germ theory or contagion, <laughs> explain to me how I went from eight colds a year minimum to zero in a year and a half. But, uh, but the point is, is that this, this, uh, this fluctuation every, I think it's 15 minutes or so, probably don't quote me on that, but it's right around that ballpark, uh, creates a, a gap in the amount of flow in the nostrils at that time. So on that logic, it makes no sense just to switch off whenever you're doing like whatever cocaine or ketamine or whatever else MDMA. Oh, don't I don't <laughs> necessarily recommend MDMA in the nose. It's it's a brutal one. Or Wait, so Hop-A you're putting powder else. in the nose, or like their crystals ground up? Because if the crystals are too big, won't it tear up your nostrils or something? Yeah, don't. So you have to make it. sure it's extra finely yeah. ground. And also, don't MDMA do anything we're recommending. Awful. This is like jackass or whatever. This is only for the people yeah. on the screen to do it. Yeah, and and so so you know you just you just gotta follow. You you just gotta take a suck in and feel which one is working. Well, toward the end of a long ketamine night, that can be a little <laughs> trying. You're like, which one is? And it's, it, it is, it feels so pathetic too, you know, cause it's just this lovely experience. It's an hour long and you come down and you're like, well, why won't I do that again? And actually the second time through is always the better one in my experience. And then the third one is just you think it's going to be as good as that second one. So you should just do ketamine twice in a row. And mm. that second one will be a better experience. So the middle child is the better one. Normally the middle child is the boring one. No. So the middle man. child is the star here. The first one is too timid. The last one is too aloof. Yeah, there's something with the reuptake of it, which doesn't work with a lot of psychedelics necessarily, but it certainly seems to with ketamine. And I think in an, in some clinical settings, they give they give a small dose early on, and then they give another dose like 15 minutes in or so. But if you're doing ketamine, that's not as practical depending would you, on how much you're doing. Would you always refer to it as being in a K hole, or do you consider the K hole to be a particular? place mentally i I would say the k-hole is a disassociative ish place not that i couldn't open my eyes and maybe like get out of a building if it was on fire or something 
but um but you wouldn't yeah, see it I that was, way you would just see it as the whole thing just transpiring like the building is guiding this guy uh, out and the stairs yeah. are me and i am me and the the air is me and it's all me and it's not me another misunderstanding about ketamine is the k-hole people are like well i would like to try ketamine but oh i've heard of this k-hole i've even been i've even been someone selling it before i ever did ketamine i had a great dealer in la and i was like i want to try ketamine and they're like okay just watch out for the k-hole now that i've had experience with ketamine it's like if you aren't k-holing you aren't doing it correctly <laughs> like if you i mean seriously if you go into a ketamine therapist's office you know a legal professional ketamine therapist that's given this to a thousand people and you don't k-hole they're going to give you a bigger dose the next time until you do K. You should be K holing. Not if you're in the middle of a dance floor, which I don't totally get that aspect of it, but no judgment. People use it in different ways. But um, but yeah, K hole, K hole is the way to go. So I blew up my snooter doing too much cut of me. Did it start it bleeding? Just like, no, it just was like, stop it. And <laughs> it was it was like it, it, you're gonna have a runny nose all day. It's gonna be like you have a cold. We're just gonna have this kind of allergic response to it. So I started I am, and uh, and uh, and then I eventually did. What's I am enough uh, intramuscular? Oh, thanks, duh. Guys. And then I think I did enough. Where I mean, it's possible because you clean off. Like if you're doing it by yourself, you're cleaning off a part, and then you're going and pop it and get in there and there's there's room for you know there's room for bacterial infection for sure but something happened where i started getting a skin rash and i was like i you know i paddleboard quite a bit but i was like i think this is the ketamine <laughs> still i think this is i think this is still my body being like is he letting it in some other way what where, the fuck oh on the where it would be in the i am part yeah and in yeah. like other places too i felt like the bottom of my feet were sensitive i mean i was doing it more than a normal person would and yeah i just felt like itchy and stuff and so then I got, and I, I went to a pharmacist and I was like, I think I'm having some sort of an allergic response. It's pretty mild, but I, I don't know if I, and I showed them and I was like, you know, it could be poison ivy or something like that. But they're like, no, it'd be worse if it was poison ivy. And I'm like, well, I think it's because it, I opened with, I've been doing ketamine lately. Oh, you lately, opened with and it. I think it's, I thought you yeah, were going to, I was pretty sure that's what it was. And it's like, they don't, it's not like they're going to call the police on you. You should really be honest with your pharmacist or doctor and just what about get down the, to the bottom of whatever. What about the vibe? Do they have a judgmental, like, well, normally, you know, I don't get a lot of patients asking for this, but <laughs> are they like, oh have, man, last weekend, you should have seen my arms. We got down. It was suspicious in another way, which is like, he kind of knew <laughs> what it was. Like, how do He's you- seen you on YouTube. Well, it was it was more like, how do you know it was ketamine? Because he's like, it was probably, well, first he was like, so I opened with ketamine and then I was like, I paddleboard a bunch, I'm in rivers and stuff, maybe it's poison ivy, poison oak. He's like, no, it's not that. I'm like, I think it's the ketamine. And he's like, mm, what else, have you eaten anything lately? And then, I, and then he's like, when did it start? I'm like, a day after he's like when did you use ketamine last i was like three days ago and he's like and then he's like and when did it start i'm like two days ago <laughs> like the morning after the ketamine and so finally he came around was like yeah it's the ketamine got an antihistamine good to go but cost of doing business mm -hmm. is is the moral of the story that's like the thing is, is like psychedelics aren't. And you did business like, quite a lot, right? Like you wouldn't have had to pay that cost if you no. didn't go to business so much. But you just kept going back to that business establishment. I just kept on going back to business. How many, how many, uh, how many trips was it before the nostrils started giving out? Hmm. I mean, well, it was like it was like a 
two or three days of doing like three or four times in a night. Damn. And then and then I took a break and did IMs because I could tell I was like having to blow my nose and stuff during the day and I didn't like that. Then I did IMs and then I felt inflation, uh, uh, some like weird skin irritation. I was like, that's really interesting that that's happened, but I wasn't worried about it. And then, uh, and so I think I just did. And then I think I mixed both. I wanted to experiment with both. Mind you, I hadn't done psychedelics in like a year and a half. Great way and to I'm start. like working on a psychedelic mm -hmm. project right now. And so I was like, I just want to tap into, that's a lot of the tricky thing of it with me. I'm like, this is work. This is, this is my job. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to articulate these experiences. So modern day explorers. <laughs> so yeah that's ketamine and then i had but that didn't even help me that i thought it was great i thought it was a great a fantastic time but i didn't i've never felt like a a long term like yeah this is helping my life from ketamine and a lot of people do but hmm. i haven't you don't one day you don't get long -term one day doing insights? mushrooms no one day doing mushrooms and i was like okay I feel like I'm a better human now and, and ready to like better my life. And that was a good reset and everything. Yeah. Yeah. How would you describe be better human? Just be kinder, being more. I always no, feel I, it as kinder whenever I get that sort of message from the, the psychedelic world. And I'm not even unkind, I don't think. I only scream no. at homeless people like if they ask for money. I don't just, I don't scream at them if they're quiet. For no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I only I only judge people by their gender or the their skin color. I don't judge people by their religion. Yeah, I don't judge their, them by their um, penis size. Yeah, if it's over eight. Yeah, and that's a, just eight. Anything doesn't good, have to be a, a unit trust. of measurement. Just any unit of measurement with eight, and then I'm good. You're all right yeah, by me. I think just uh, for me. A better person is just freer from my own unwanted patterns. Oh, yes. And boy, do we have a lot of those. And boy, Holy are we smokes. carrying so many that we don't even know the, the briefcase code to unlock and look at what's in it. It's just these heavy briefcases with the code that we can't unlock that we're carrying everywhere. We just did a Mind Under Art. We just recorded one. Uh, it... it is probably out by the time listeners are hearing this, but it was your piece. What was it? The it was like break the, the guy pattern. on the break the pattern, and it's a guy on a on like a a loop train sort of ride, and it's broken in a piece, and it's like you can break the pattern any day or whatever. And and for anyone that's like, yeah, but how do you realistically do that? Like realistically. Mushrooms. <laughs> Mushrooms are a pretty realistic way of doing that. If you're serious about doing that, I I think it's not even the trip itself. A lot of times it's just the following days um, yeah. afterwards. And, and so much can be packed into whatever that six hour period, just in your own perspective, your own narrative. It can really um, feel like it was a month a month worth of stuff could have happened in your head. Whereas yeah. normally like a month is nothing. It's like, oh, it's already August. I thought it was May. I didn't do anything these last two months. And then there can be a huge difference between one day in August, like a Thursday, and then you do the mushrooms. And then Friday, you're like, I'm a completely different person. I've started this nonprofit. I've adopted eight kids. I have a dog farm with only organically sourced dogs and our employees make 10 times as much as the CEO does because that's the only fair way to do it. That's what I see. Can you imagine um, like an AA type meeting group for, <laughs> for people that had breakthroughs on ayahuasca or whatever mushrooms? And they're like, oh, yeah, it got bad for a while there. I adopted i had eight children i adopted a kennel of dogs and started a non-profit i gave most of my money away to poor people and 
I can't stop doing it. I can't stop doing good. And I feel like I'm not caring for myself anymore. What's your story? Well, I, I just, every time I see a nature program now, since my psychedelic experience, I realize that I can't throw plastic away anymore. And now my entire house is filled with plastic and I don't know <laughs> how to get rid of it. And I try to help people, but it seems like the more good I do, it's just the more responsibilities that I have. And that's just a <laughs> AA group for people that have done. The good, good people recovery, doing too much good recovery. No, it wouldn't that's, exist. That's my vice. When I change someone's life and I've volunteered with the Habitat for Humanity and and, uh, and then I saw impoverished families move from a tent into a house and uh, and turn their life around. Ah, I'm hooked on it. <laughs> I can't stop. Now I'm just building houses everywhere. I always, I've uh, never done that, but I saw people with pictures of doing that. And I always wondered, like, are they building it right? I mean, they're spending more time focusing on the photo op and smiling at the camera. Are they hitting the nail in right? Is that house's foundation going to last? Are the, I did are Habitat the beams for crooked? Humanity. You didn't have what? Uh, I did a I did a Habitat for Humanity when I was like a shitty teenager. I had no empathy for anyone or anything, and I needed to like get confirmed. What's in confirmed? My, uh, uh, Catholic? my Catholic, yeah, yeah. You Is go that through confirmation. The same as baptism for like adults or what? Yes, yeah. Confirmed. It's basically like it's like graduation for church. Eighteen, and sixteen. He is sixteen, I think, but. You know, like, I shouldn't put this on every teenager because this is just me. I, I feel like I was just, uh, I hated life so much. I was much more of a, like, make fun of anyone for anything and uh, type of person when I was a teenager and hate all of existence <laughs> when I was a teenager than I was like, maybe I could do some good in the world that didn't happen until like early 20s or something that's still pretty um, early but some people uh, still don't have it figured out in their 60s right and i uh, yeah i did a habitat for humanity and i was pretty I, I slacked off quite a bit um during it admittedly but they had yeah they had people they had people building legit houses for people. They Not were, the one your the family that you were assigned to moved into. Yeah, they were killed by it in the early outs. I think they have a lot of habitat for humanity. It's like people that got a house work on other people's houses as well. There's like a lot of that sort of circular yeah thing going on. Just an, uh, it's just it's just like a. Hey, we're taking this thing that the Amish people do, but we're just doing it with poor people. What do the Amish do? They they build houses. They like a, they get together as the community and like erect the barn and pull it up with the ropes and stuff like that. And they all get together and build. Yeah, uh, but at the cost wouldn't... of the latest gadget, which I just could never do. No. I mean, we incarnated in this period of time to watch the gadgets ramp up year after year, the transistor size getting cut in half every two years, technology going faster and faster and faster, and you want to churn butter and make a house out of it? Shame it's not on even, you. It's not even, it's like, it's like, okay, we can go into Walmart at certain times, and it's like, hey, can you turn the, the electricity off for? Okay, one person from our community is allowed to go into a Walmart. Okay, we can have tractors, but they can't have rubber tires <laughs> on them. They can only have the steel wheels on them because those comp can't be driven on regular roads as easily. So then we can't use road. It's just we've devised ways to make our life a pain in the ass. We've decided it has nothing to do with electricity and everything to do with 
our lives being more of a pain in the ass. It's the floor is lava to. all over again. We're all just yeah. kids with that want to continue to play the floor is lava somehow. And whether it's mm-hmm. the, what is it, the very <laughs> orthodox Jew that can't hit the light switch on Sunday, which nothing wrong with the orthodox Jew, nothing wrong with the light switch, nothing wrong with Sundays, nothing wrong with being wrong, nothing wrong but- with butter, but... You're just pretending that you're not doing work. You're actually doing work. I mean, if you want to talk about handicap principle, which is uh, we, we've talked about on the show but in the past, the idea and evolutionary biology of 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 the origin of organism. nice flex <laughs> to nice flex, it, but <laughs> to yeah, the the if you want to show how strong or how good your genes are, or how resilient you are, or how well you can handle an environment. You intentionally put obstacles within that pass, uh, path to signal your ability to overcome those obstacles. So you could just not use any obstacles, but uh, like anyone could, uh, the idea is I could say, Oh, Ramin, you know me. I can bench 400 pounds. Well, I knew that. Show me. You know, you have to show it. And and so it's it's the idea of the, the, this then creates these kind of honest indicators of fitness. And there's a lot of there's a lot of in group selection pressures in that same way. And so the Amish have that in spades. They have m- making life uh, uh, like unbearably difficult in a modern world of like, okay, we can use pay phones still. And now there's not pay phones anymore. Okay. We can like one person can have a cell phone, but it, it needs to be like whatever service doesn't provide very good service in our region. Yeah. And, and then it's, and then, it, but also by virtue of just looking peculiar, like Hasidic Jews or a biker gang or whatever else, where, where to anyone outside of that group, you're going to just kind of draw attention and it's not necessarily the most positive attention there's going to be judgment that you know for hey no judgment here but but people at large are probably going to have some judgment you're probably going to be excluded from yeah not us uh, though conversation you could dress like anything and look like anything and behave in any way and we would just be like oh hey what's going on nice to meet you too but because of the cost of that, mm-hmm. that is an honest indicator to your group. This is how much I believe this thing. I am willing to sacrifice alienating the rest of the world for this. This uh, this has to do with people with different political view. People, people will be like, oh, well, that politician that I support, like, I don't believe that thing. But like, if you do believe the crazier things, it's more of a symbol that you support your side or that politician. Same with the psychedelic community. You get a beard, you get a man bun going, or you get dreads or whatever. You own more Grateful are Dead shirts. Look at- <laughs> yeah. And you're going to get, s- you, you know damn well that People are going to look at you differently. You're going to get some judgment within the general population. And sometimes there's benefits to that. Sometimes there's not. But it is a way of advertising solidarity um, within the group. And so, man, the Amish, the Amish are really committed. Do you know what Super year they committed. stopped using technology at? I mean, you you said one person gets a phone sometimes, but. Like, aren't I, I don't we know. All... I don't know if that. By the way, I'm kind of talking out of my ass. The tractor thing is real. Like in certain, like the using steel things without tires around them. Yeah. Like, okay, we can use it. All but I know is that they churn like that. butter, and there's the Quaker Oats guy, and he like yells at his youngest daughter for doing something wrong. That's like what I imagine. It's probably nothing like that. There's probably no Quaker Oats guy. There's probably there's... no butter churning. They don't even eat butter anymore. Something like that. But in my head, that's what it what it feels like but we are we're all amish in that like 
maybe you don't listen to music that was made after 2011 not consciously but just that never <laughs> goes on your playlist like your your os is still two years old your computer's 10 years yes. old there's vr and like all sorts of smart tech and you're like nah nah i want to live in 2012 a little bit more this 2021 tech is a little too too much i'm sure i'll catch That's... on in 2040 and i'll start using tiktok in 2040 and then I'm still on MySpace and 2020 and so on. Like we're all That's a little a funny Amish, way of putting we? it. Yeah, we're all a little Amish. We're all a little New Amish merch on the idea inside. That you can get on our website. We're all a little Amish <laughs> that you can buy online using. Well, the, another there's a lot of Amish in Wisconsin. Not Sounds as much like as it. say Pennsylvania or something. But um but they're uh they deal in cash quite a bit too. So some of them, and they don't really like pay taxes so much. And but they probably don't make a ton either. So they're not like the government is probably, or maybe they do. They, maybe they sell a lot of butter. You hear a lot of stories that because what will happen is, um, you know, they'll need a window replaced or something that they just don't really do. And they will, they will call for service and people go out there and i've heard tons of stories just like they just open up a drawer and there's just a pile of cash in that drawer and they're like <laughs> oh what is it four hundred dollars here you go and they just normally well uh, they're they're so they have such a uh they have such a um circular economy too you know they don't really spend hardly anything at all that's not it's not that they're like selling so much butter or, or whatever they're whatever they're selling they just don't they, spend they just don't spend anything yeah, yeah. I always yeah, get them was, confused with and i know this has changed from a psychedelic episode into an amish episode but come on it's but, the quaker oaks guy it's interesting but it's like that is to me a lot of aspects of that, believe it or not, are kind of the embodiment of the psychedelic experience. We call it tripping to take a trip to see from a different perspective to see. I I usually compare it to traveling to a foreign land or or something like that. And I I don't I don't think that uh, that an Amish person having there. We've been talking about the um, the. Be turning into adulthood on the show yeah. recently, and the Amish have that. I don't know what it's called, like that tour Snorgen Fest four year <laughs> that tour festival. four year Snorgen Festival yeah. where, where where they get you to go, go get out like and just live railed the... for for like three months, <laughs> you, and you like do all the coke, and you get railed by you just everyone, get railed. and then ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people are like, you know what? I mean, I don't regret any of what I did, but I'm going back to my family. I prefer a simple life at home with the butter churn. <laughs> Compared to getting a rail the day in and day out. Yeah, just airtight. For four years. Mm -hmm. Four years of airtight. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, they, they yeah, do they their own churn butter. Yeah, their psychedelic experience is just going into Times Square or something. And then someone There's living in nothing. Times Square has to do uh, something else because they're already overstimulated. Is is a perfect metaphor because there's uh, what whatever uh, me eating mushrooms and going paddleboarding down the Mississippi River is not as trippy to me as an Amish person going and living outside of their culture anywhere for two to four years or whatever time frame isn't is. that There's so cool no that way. they get to do that because if you and i wanted to go see the future we really couldn't <laughs> like we i mean maybe singapore or something singapore is more future but we don't get to go see the future we're already in it they're disconnected from it and if they want to go vacation in the future they can go look at it and that's kind of cool that is interesting uh, like no no don't tell me how it works don't tell me don't ruin it for me yeah i'm just taking it in i remember so my grandpa like he used to have a tv factory and he was uh you know electrical engineer and like loved knowing wow. how stuff worked and stuff and i remember my dad and brother trying to explain to him wi-fi and 
this laptop and touch screens and stuff. And like, you know, he's trying to understand it from like, you know, from bottom up principles, but now it's, it's grown too much. And like at the time, this is what, like 10 years ago or something. And just, mm. he, he couldn't follow it. I can't follow it either. No one can follow all of it. It requires like hundred thousand different specialists to, to make all this stuff we use, like even a computer mouse, like no one person can make a computer mouse. You need like a bunch of different specialists to, to do it. But the point of all that was, is no one's that, following. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the point of it. Oh, the, 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 the point of it is no one can, um, even if you wanted to explain to the Irish people how today's technology works, like you wouldn't be able to explain 30 years ago technology, how it works. Cause it's already, it's left the realm of one person to be able to be an expert on any one thing. I had this, one of my favorite guests on Here We Are is this guy, Herman Ponser. He's just an incredible communicator. And he's, 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 uh, uh, he, he studies the evolution of metabolism. And, uh, and, but I have also just like, I took one of his classes. He's been on the show a couple of times. I had him on stand up science show I was touring with, but he's lived with these, I'm sure I'm butchering the name, but I think it's Hootie people. And the blowf- uh, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The, the bluefish, uh, the, the, um, the, this band of like, not so much hunter gatherer anymore, you know, but still, you know, like, like there's, there's nothing that's totally hunter gatherer yeah. anymore. It's a little bit of hunt, a little bit basically of basically doesn't. Yeah, there's still like a tremendous amount of it, but you're still getting the shirts from the whichever championship <laughs> team uh, didn't actually win. The Lakers and the Bulls played, but they needed to uh, like make yeah. sure both of them. The Utah Jazz champion shirt with the <laughs> Hil- Hillary yeah. 2016. Uh, first female <laughs> yeah. president shirt. I wonder yeah, how many like first. Like, I wonder how many shirts that are like really centered on the first female president that are in a landfill somewhere. And it probably distorts their reality, like because they probably, as far as they know, Hillary Clinton is probably <laughs> the first female <laughs> president of the United States. I mean, it says so on every shirt that everyone wears. Yeah, you're saying their, the shirt lies? In their community. Wait, who do you think won? Oh, yeah, right. Why would they make a whole shirt? <laughs> um, but they these people, they have a similar-ish thing to the Amish, and uh, which... But by, by the way, we we crowbar a lot of stuff in this show, and I know it's like a little crowbar-y to compare this to tripping. But that is, you really don't get much more of a trip than being a hunter gatherer and then going to like London or something like mm. that. That's like that's fucking crazy, and and th- that's uh, or being I, an I mean, English man in New York, like Sting si- sings about. <laughs> Where he says, I'm an alien, I'm a legal alien, I'm an English man in New York. <laughs> and, but they they go out in those times and they often enjoy themselves and everything else. And they also usually choose to go back. Yep. They're usually like, I mean, their skills are so specialized because they're brought up doing all the sad thing is, is most of them just become like tour guides and stuff because they know the land really well and they can take a, you know, tour of gringos or whatever, like a bunch of and Chinese people really or whatever will well. come there and it pays really well. And you show them some snakes and stuff and tell them about the various things. But, uh, but they, when, when you haven't been brought up in the, in the city life it, you don't you don't take to it very well and uh, and i'm sure you have some fun and everything else but it's not really a thing also they don't have the education built for you know understanding data entry and bullshit like that 
We all but, hate it. Like we all secretly, you know, there's this trope that's like kind of like uh, we're supposed to be all naked in the forest eating fruit, but no capitalism, which mm -hmm. there, I mean, that's a way oversimplification of it. But like we all secretly disdain this world of emails and spreadsheets and but maybe that's because we're only focusing on the bad parts. Like we forget that we have air conditioning and modern medicine and the fact that if we didn't genetically alter the fruit most of the fruit is just filled with seeds and there's no like good juicy fruit part to it no you wouldn't want to eat an actual apple like, yeah from like a apples, thousand, thousand years ago those suck uh, an apple uh, even even during johnny appleseed johnny appleseed which we tell elementary children about those apples were absolute garbage and they were act they were used to turn into alcohol <laughs> johnny appleseed would go to where he thought people were maybe traveling next and he would and he would uh, pl uh plant a uh oh shoot what what's the what's orchard? the huge or yeah he would and he would plant an orchard and then set it up for them to make alcohol out of those al uh, apples because those apples were good for nothing but making al and uh, throwing uh, them alcohol. at savages that were trying to, <laughs> yeah. to reclaim their land you wouldn't eat those apples in a million years no. um there's there's a fun so. image of like all the the fruits and how they've been selectively bred over just thousands of years to be what they are today and the banana is just filled with seeds the plum or the peach is just the pit with like a thin layer of the edible stuff on the outside. Same with apples, same with everything. They're all just inedible rocks until we injected them intramuscularly with our uh, <laughs> capitalism science or whatever. Genetically modified. Yeah, to the idea of having like a couple, the idea of not eating seeds defies all of evolutionary reality <laughs> there is no point to the fruit if the thing eating it isn't eating the food it isn't eating the seeds and then shitting it out somewhere else it defies everything that was always it, that it was built for at yeah seedless with, grapes that, would last one generation yeah like just, just all right that's happened. the end of our line now and i'm just joking yeah. about the capitalism part doing it obviously that unchecked capitalism is the worst uh, case <laughs> yeah, scenario yeah. for the world but um well it's yeah. also like genetically my gmo stuff is like it's ge genetically mod every every single thing is gen find me something that isn't genetically modified that's why i love it's the the balls on soylent which um maybe they are an evil company now who knows if they gradually change into bad but on the bottle of Soylent, it says like we are pro GMO, and they have a little like DNA uh, helix thing, like where normally there yeah. would be a recycle symbol, and it's like read on our website why GMO is actually not bad in all cases, and it's kind of been, um, you know, it's like yeah. UFO, unidentified uh, flying object, or it's genetically modified. Like how are you modifying it? You could modify it in a way that's bad for your health, or you could modify it in a way that's kind of good. If you want to advertise to people that you have a very specific ideal of what is natural that you worship and have turned into dogma and also have never taken a genetics course, then be super anti-GMO and be loud about it. Yeah. <laughs> and because it it like it, it makes no sense. There there is there's certainly there's certainly things like the uh what's the what's the company everyone Monsanto criticizes? Mo Monsanto Yeah, they want to where... own water so that you can't drink water unless you license it from them like like Spotify streams or something. There are things you can genetically modify for somewhat devious purposes like say you can have what do they call like the self-killing seed or whatever so basically monsanto doesn't want you to 
be able to buy a bunch of seeds from them, plant a harvest, and then be able to reuse the seeds and make a new harvest and never buy from them again. So they're killing this. It, so so you have a one-time use. So you need to come back to them to buy those seeds again. There's shady stuff like that. Feels very out. evil. I'm it, interested it, in hearing the argument not of why it's, it's not, not but evil. It, I'm not, I'm not saying that's not evil. What I'm saying is it's what it what what it isn't is something that's labeled GMO being inherently bad for you in terms of your health or inherently like changing your own gen. It's modifying my genetics and the yeah. genetics change and we got to get back to the basics and all all that stuff is way overplayed in our modern culture, but. At the same time, hunter-gatherers and Amish people have a point. It's a messy. We live in a very messy reality. Oh, yeah, the messiest. I mean, Mars yeah. seems pretty, like, stable and stuff. And Jupiter with all its gas tornadoes and stuff. Even even they aren't as... That doesn't seem like it's as much of a hairy situation as here, but... Um, I like I like gas tornado. As, gas tornado, uh, <laughs> and I, I think I I don't know if this uh if this is too idealistic or maybe it's very common sense. But shouldn't a good business the goal is to not like stay in business no matter what? Like you should be able to put yourself out of business. Like if you have the choice of uh selling a record that lasts forever or a record that decays in two weeks and people have to buy it again over and over and over again and it yeah. costs the same to you and you just behind closed doors get to make the choice do i want to sell this one-time thing to customers that really enjoy it and they get to keep it forever or will i say that no the only way we can do it is that it decays and that you have to keep rebuying the seed always it yeah. just feels evil even if it's a tough business move like it should um if if something can that's why I like file sharing I always thought it didn't equate to the same thing as stealing a car so you wouldn't steal a car would you like yeah you if you can duplicate the car then why not that's a tangent <laughs> yeah, though yeah. that's a big tangent yeah, just, you I shouldn't have just, to pay for the no, same seating no that's a good again. tangent no that's that's an interesting point i, I mean yeah like it's, with LSD people, that's why it it unlocks the heart or something and it makes people want to give it away and uh, not just profit off having the biggest Walmart LSD business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's the, the to me, the idea of hearing that and saying, well, they have a seed that, it, that creates a thing and, and then it, you can't um you can't reharvest it it doesn't create seeds that's unnatural that is way less of a concern than everyone having the exact same banana or the exact same apple that that and and that's the thing no one seems that concerned about which is if we all just eat granny smith apples because that we've all decided that's the best one and monsanto is making the seed and we're putting it everywhere that makes it ripe for a virus to spread and wipe everything out that's what happened during the potato famine oh really was they Too got much really, of the uh, same potato strain so the virus knew like it got comfortable with growing in it yeah typically typically it's like incest would, right like the same thing where with um, in incest, like you're more likely to have genetic defects or something. It's if you if there's not enough genetic crossbreeding, then it's more susceptible for errors. Every every single thing has some genetic defects or genetic errors, but most of them are not dominant. And and so as long as as long as your genetic errors don't match someone else's genetic errors. You should be in good shape. Remember and, in and high school or even middle school where they taught you that freckles are a genetic mistake, a mm. genetic mutation or something? I might have slept through that, that class. I remember they taught that one. And then so all the people with freckles are like, no, I'm a mutant. But now it's flipped around because now everyone is putting on the TikTok and Instagram filter where they do have freckles. So freckles won. Starbelly Sneetches. Yep. There's... But uh, yeah, the potato famine was because there's 
it used to be so many different kinds of potatoes would grow in so many different kinds of areas, uh, different cliffs or whatever else. And but then the the demand for this one very specific potato, like this is the potato, the Angus we make McLeod here. potato. <laughs> and this is what our potato wedges look like, and they're the biggest. And like, whoa, look at that potato! This is all we're buying. And then they screwed themselves unknowingly because they left themselves susceptible to. Um, you know, parasitic threats that got in there and just wreaked havoc. You and can't then, stay on think, top forever. That's the lesson. Like any yeah. with music too, like once a style of music becomes really popular, then the opposite of it takes its place and then it becomes cheesy, whether it's disco, hair metal, or whatever we've been through uh, the same type of rap before. But um, I can't help but see a parallel that like you're never going to be on top forever. Something else is going to take over unless you also change so it's like you change or something else that is the change takes you over but you're not staying the same do you did you ever see the paul of tompkins bit about the potato family no i'm interested though <laughs> it's like 20 years old or something but it still sticks in my mind it was very good it was that's just still like 2001 that's still like we're still <laughs> yeah, pretty that's... we're not talking about the 80s or 70s here that's still kind of <laughs> recent right 2001 was yeah, a year ago yeah. it was just yesterday. Uh, it was just about how picky of eaters they <laughs> must have been <laughs> Sorry, there's no potatoes here's all of these other things you can eat instead and he had like insane act outs oh that's uh, funny i mean it's and, an obvious straw man bit like as all stand-up yeah, yeah. comedies is because yeah, they probably yeah. had nothing like potatoes was the bare minimum of probably what they got to eat and they didn't have even that mm. i was watching that uh not to go too much on a tangent but the potato famine in ireland and I was watching that DeLorean doc about John DeLorean, the guy that invented the DeLorean car from Back to the Future. You know mm -hmm. who I'm talking about? Yeah. So uh, the factory was in North Belfast, and it was during the, the war between the Irish Protestants and the Catholics. And it looks mm -hmm. like the Middle East, there's bombs going off, there's like soldiers, oh, yeah. tanks and everything. And it's so funny to think of it because you're like, you guys are the same. Like, there's no... Like what's the what's the difference between the Irish Protestant and Ath Irish Catholic? And they were yeah. uh, bombing the hell out of each other, but they worked at the same factory together at the DeLorean factory, and they had separate entrances. So, like Protestants had one entrance, Catholics had another entrance. Wow. They lived in different places. Our kids went to different schools. There's a wall separating their houses. Yet they all went to work at the same factory. And when they were in that factory, everything was chill. My God, mm -hmm. that's amazing, huh? And then they ran out of money, and the whole thing fell apart. But that's that's on the dock. It's not that psychedelic. But Back what? to the Future is sort of. I wonder how. Well, this is. I mean, this is this is maybe not a psychedelic episode anyway. I mean, it's tough to say. It's it's, it's got still something in, in there. It. Yeah, it's still it, it's still it's still there. But it, because now we've just gone on our classic tangents, which I like as much, if not more. And let I, me bring it back I, to psychedelics, which I don't think there's ever been a time I've taken psychedelics and it, it played out the way that I anticipated. It's yeah. always some different turn. Like you think you're going to work on art or something and then you cry in the bathroom for eight hours. And then That's, sometimes you think you're going to cry in the bathroom for eight hours and then you go hiking and then you have like epiphanies and so on. And it's just never what you think it's going to be, but it is what yeah. you need. I think it's what your, your body, your mind, your soul needs for you to address in that moment. Yeah. In the kind of checklist of how to have a good psychedelic experience, one thing that gets often missed is like set an intention which is good i mean you should set an intention every day you should set an intention before you watch the news if you think to do it you know you should you should always set uh intentions um more often than you think you should but 
the key is to then lower your expectations <laughs> or or not lower drop your not lower just completely drop your expectations yeah. Because if it does happen to be your expectation, it might be way beyond what you ever expect. It, you you might think, oh, I'm going to get some clarity on what I'm thinking about on my path forward and on one of the shows that I'm put, putting together, my career path or my, um, my uh, uh, reconciling this relationship in my life or um, understanding why I can't break this exercise, like this uh, like poor health habit that I have or something. It might way beyond exceed that expectation. It might, but you set that expectation and you drop it because like you just said, total opposite <laughs> situation occurs all the time. Yeah. And, and that's, that's good because uh, that's, that's what the, the, the psychedelic wanted. It's probably, it's probably more what you needed. Mm -hmm. If you're, especially something like mushrooms which to me is unlocking it's the the shower thoughts the stuff that's on the surface of your subconscious is not quite breaking it at breaking through but probably going to eventually or really wanted to and just getting one more layer there's still a subconscious but you just dip down one more layer the water became a little less uh, 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 murky, and you can see a few more of the fish and stuff like that, and and life in that water that you don't normally get access to, and within that, sometimes it's impossible to consciously know what is going to be of value just below your surface because you haven't experienced it yet. Yeah. And with, with psilocybin in particular, doesn't it make a lot of just more neurons connect? So you're just experiencing this, not overload, but way more load than normal of interconnectivity. So like seemingly unrelated ideas then can get together and like, oh, that never occurred to me that those are the same thing. And I was doing that because this year, five-year-old me was thinking of and, and yeah. so on. Until you smell pride... <laughs> <laughs> and and see the color of discomfort uh, is sometimes it's just hard to make the connections that that you need it to yeah do you ever think about like what would it be like to have maximum neural connectivity in your brain and you think that you're oh. god but really you're just it's just all going on here and it's just all firing off well, think about it. Everyone's report is, it's all so connected. Mm -hmm. And I get it. It's just universal love, which love is also just a, from my point of view, and we've talked about before, an evolved uh, indicator of, of connection. It's, it's, a, it's a commitment to a connection that was before there was lawyers or whatever else, you'd feel this like undeniable feeling of love that you couldn't break yourself free of. So even if there was like a more attractive or smarter mate or friend or whatever else, you don't have to waste your time looking around constantly trying to upgrade this much because you uh, have formed this bond, but and check this out. Like not even in the, it's, it's easy to, and I know you're not saying it like this, but before we even get there, like the only framing it in terms of, you know, and like uh, multicellular animals, cause it goes beyond even multicellular animals, single celled mm -hmm. animals. There's tight bonds between just the atoms there's tight bonds like at the smallest level. So one could interpret yeah. love as not just the oxytocin thing. One could interpret it as like taking the offense against entropy. It's like it's sticking it to entropy's face. Like we're going to build higher forms of connection, higher forms of, you know, bonds, complexity, as opposed to just random information that's just like, okay, random information, who cares? None of it connects but then it's like okay we're gonna build this connection you and me we're in this for good other proton oh let's get this neutron in here with us oh let's bond with this let's form these things and then so 
on the the higher philosophical level, love is the the offense against entropy. I think that would be a great piece of art or something for this. Uh, taking the offense against entropy, maybe it doesn't have to do with the whole episode, but damn, that's a good quote. Taking the offense against entropy is, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's a really smart, interesting Because entropy is a ruthless motherfucker. It doesn't care if it's your daughter no. or your, your uncle no. or your daughter's uncle. Which is it's, you, your brother? It doesn't. It doesn't. Care. It doesn't care. It's it still going to take. It's not personal either. It's not personal either. Yeah. It's not. It's not trying to tear you to shreds. It's just doing its thing. Yeah, because if it was personal, at least maybe you could appeal to it somehow. But it's so impersonal. Yeah. It's just this. Not even machine. <laughs> it's the thing that tears machines down. It's the thing that rusts machines and makes it back into random bits of information and i um I, I like to frame it as there's no highest level of complexity but there is a lowest level of chaos like you can get yeah. to where it's pure randomness and nothing means anything and there's blank but there's no like maximum future i feel like you can always get more complex more complex more complex there's no end to the decimal point of complexity um that's why you should listen to Michael Garfield's complexity podcast and future fossils. Let and me th let me throw the opposite at you, which oh, is do it. Com combining some stuff that we, uh, which is kind of uh, a caution of of the one apophony of making too many connections and putting w which which there there's no such thing as making too many connections. There is such a thing as taking an erroneous uh, an erroneous connection too seriously that's true uh and and that that's the trick of it much in the same way if you have a shower thought and you're like i've got it like my my thing i really i want showers to have air dryers like all the way down so you go in the shower you shower and then you press a button and you air dry yourself it's a jetson it's, style or maybe jetson's just towels jetson you style, off with a it's, robot it, it's whatever it's not practical no one's going to put all the ducts in their homes and everything else it's not like you're you're not any listener if you want to make that business happen go ahead uh, that that's uh, uh the world will be a better place for it i don't think it'll be terribly profitable but you have an idea like that on psychedelics or something You're like oh my god let me start moving some money around <laughs> you haven't come down yet you know and and so there there's there's definitely dangers there and this is this is like sneak peek of sort of things we talk about in deal dmt 101 is so we've talked about the Capgras syndrome before, which is the imposter syndrome, the idea of someone coming out of a coma uh, and not recognizing their parents. Their par they talk to their parents on the phone. They're like, hey, mom, dad, I'm better now. And then their parents come visit and they get really weird. They confide on the doctor. These aren't my parents. These, these people are imposters. They are actors that had plastic surgery and <laughs> were trained to look and sound exactly like my parents. And the reasoning is, is that something got severed. What if the doctor severed. believed them? Be like, you pieces of shit better get out of here now. You You're not fooling anybody. Fuckers. What kind of a monster? <laughs> Start pulling at their face, which is not pot plastic surgery. <laughs> when did these classes start? <laughs> How much did the plastic surgery cost? And why did he go through this much just to play a practical joke on some poor person that just got out of a coma? I love that idea. Doctor, that before that they knew the syndrome, it's like everything. Again. A coma patient. Someone just comes out of a coma. Doctor who believes every word they say. <laughs> We've got to find the plastic surgeon that's doing this, and I've narrowed it down to three schools in the in the county that could be educating them at this level. 
So the idea is, is that your connection's been severed between the part of the brain that that uh, gets information to the amygdala and, and the parts that process emotion has been severed. So you see your parents, you don't feel the normal emotion, whether subconscious or not, whether good or not, hatred, love, whatever it might be toward your parents, even on a subtle level, you still feel it subconsciously. And so when you feel nothing, when you see these people, that that makes no sense based on all of your past experience in life. And so your brain comes up with this idea that these people are imposters. That's how your brain rectifies this, much like the car sickness thing that we talked about earlier. It comes up with a, uh, a wild guess as an idea why why something like this would happen. With that to us seems very peculiar to the brain is is uh is trying to take a best guess at understanding an odd situation that it wasn't prepared for now take that with psychedelics where where psychedelics make more connections and i think just the opposite happens everyone so, is my family everything's your family the trees are your family the planet is mother nature mm -hmm. father time and just we're all so connected and trees and there's no separation i love everything and we're all love and all all of that and that's not even that's a wonderful thing um to experience way 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 better than thinking your actual parents are actors that deceived you with plastic surgery and acting classes um but it's still not necessarily in line with reality no it's a place you want to visit i don't know if you heard that beeping or if it was caught on mic but it was throwing me off no so uh so yeah so that's um everything that i had to say about <laughs> everything and well we'll do maybe because the next one the next episode i was maybe going to we we're maybe going to explore speaking of trippy situations covid and what happens life after covid my estimation is covid will be a three to five year event and if we're lucky will be if we're lucky and probably, you know, economically there will be impacts, but both positive and negative things will happen um, in the future. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to see things differently. Um, I thought I thought the first three months of COVID were the trippiest thing I'd ever experienced. It Gal Gadot quite... singing Imagine, Italians singing from the <laughs> rooftops. People baking it, sourdough. It it was like wa walking into a grocery store covered in garbage bags and stuff with like and wearing glasses and things. All it, the ice was, cream and toilet paper sold out. There was it really literally and with without the aid of psychedelics, I actually had a uh a psychotic break and everything i had the whole shebang i was hypomanic for months it, it, there's it, so yeah that was my plan was the next time is is like even thinking about some of the things to prepare for in the future wild speculation it's certainly not something that i feel super confident in my ideas about but just a fun thing to talk about and also because i think that there is a, you know, probably cliche to a lot of people, but there's so many positive things that maybe universal basic income ish might come out of this. I would love mm, that. I, I think a lot I'm of people super would super optimistic about it, but it, but that would be a fun topic for conversation. I think it. I'm more optimistic about that potentially happening now than I was before COVID. I think maybe things like self-driving cars and things like that, that, that uh, maybe that stuff might happen faster. Maybe it gives us a better sense of um, uh, some of 
some of the racial divide in different areas and and things like that. Who knows? But I thought that might be make for a good topic for next episode. But I don't know. Maybe we should push that back because we definitely episode twenty one. We have we have alcohol mm-hmm. um, turning twenty one. We're going to be talking about alcohol, and so. I don't know. Maybe we do another. Do you think we continue? Do you think people are going totally to be do another that? psychedelic one? I feel like there should just be another psychedelic one. Yeah, right and we can brand this. them just slightly because... differently. We can package them slightly oh, yeah, differently. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I think that's a. I think there's there's obviously um, plenty to talk about here, and we went on our our. Uh, trademark zillion tangents which were all good and relevant we can't help uh, it or at least i can't help it i can't either and i represent entropy in that sense maybe or do i represent (laughs) connectivity because like tangents are like what about this thing that's not connected let's connect it to the conversation and then entropy is saying that's not connected we're both pretty good connectors you're excellent at creating metaphors from nothing yeah, it's kind um, of like making homemade applesauce. Like you don't <laughs> just need one apple; you need a variety of different apples of different consistency. Otherwise, your applesauce is not going to win the applesauce competition. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure you worked very hard on your applesauce, but that's just uh, not going to cut it here no. at our applesauce competition, <laughs> which is a popular thing that happens in Amish communities. Yeah. Um, Those dirty, dirty Irish. I mean, if you want more of us and you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash mind under pod and check out our weekly series mind under art, which we referenced a couple times uh, in this episode already, but we also have a bonus monthly full episode. The last one that came out, what is called Shane versus Remaining, where it was actually, uh, so we, like I've said in the past, we try to do something a little different each time. And this was actually a recording from way back in like October, November of 2020, when I was potentially putting, I was trying out, I tried out like three different podcasts in 2020 to see if I could get something that I really felt good about. And it was close um, but no cigar, but I had Ramin on a show called, uh, um, Shane versus meaning when I would have people on to talk about what they thought about the meaning of life. And then would, uh, my goal was to tactically prompt it, but I usually found myself agreeing with people. So I was like, <laughs> I can't air this bullshit. Um, and so, so That's yeah, good, cause otherwise this show might've not happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And precursor to this show. Yeah. So you can check out things like that. And um, just generally speaking, one thing I'd like to mention is there's a particular thing that I like. And that's when people uh, like are listening to the show and then share the thing on Instagram in a story and tag us. Because then I like to share those stories on my own things so people can see that people are enjoying the show and are learning things and enjoying it. So Yeah, and add you your own little that, sentence that there. Tell happy. us how you felt about it. Tell you how how you felt about the Amish, how you felt about the applesauce. Was it of good consistency? Just write your write your thoughts in there, share them, and then we'll share them and maybe that'll help your account grow. It might do that very thing, but it had better be a damn good comment about applesauce. Our listeners are smart as funk. Yeah, you better say something so interesting about applesauce. Yeah. Like, I got to follow this person. Oh, I also wanted to say um, that uh, this this wardrobe is brought to you by Church of Chill. I don't think I mentioned it this episode, but my Mm. uh, friends over at the Very Ape podcast make a, a delicious shirt with little aliens on the sleeves and so it's church of chill they put good music together and they're some of the most psychedelic people i know in my whole life and they're they're not posers they live that life and Mm. uh they're just the sweetest so i wanted to give them a little shout here 
Love it. Awesome. Very Ape Podcast. Very Ape Podcast. Spread and love. But give us and... money first. Give us money on Patreon first. Don't give them money first. Give us first. I mean, f- and follow your heart toward giving us money. Exactly. And until next time. Keep on salivating, honey. Honey. Ding.